Hey everyone. If you guys don't know, Dopa, a Korean player, is considered the best Twist of Fate player in the world. I've learned almost everything I know about TF by watching his replays, and so is probably every other great TF player in the pro scene. So I figured I would review one of his games with you guys so you can understand his thought process as well. In this game, he is playing TF vs Talon and Challenger. Talon is really strong in solo queue right now because of how easy it is for him to get mid priority and then roam or kill the jungler. It's super frustrating to play against and requires really good minion wave management and map awareness. So let's jump into analysis. TF is a medium range control mage versus Talon who is a melee assassin. Talon does way more damage with a full rotation of spells and they have even wave clear but TF has the range advantage. The game plan for this matchup will be similar to the game plan in our previous TF video where I was playing against Fizz, but a lot more advanced. Mission 1. Match Wave Clear Dopa can't really freeze versus Talon since Talon has so much wave clear to break it, so he needs to be clearing just as fast as Talon to make sure he doesn't have mid priority. Mission 2. Harass without giving wave control away This is the difficult part of the matchup. Dopa wants to harass Talon as much as possible because the lower health Talon gets, the harder it is for him to roam. But it's hard to harass without giving the wave control up. Mission 3. Defend and set up ganks for jungler. In this game, Dopa's jungler is Nidalee. Nidalee is a great combo with TF because the gold card makes her spears really easy to hit. Also, Nidalee is a jungler that loves to invade, so he needs to protect Nidalee from Talon roams. Alright. So this game plan is very different from our traditional ones because this is a very high elo game and high elo TF vs Talon matchup would be drastically different from a low elo matchup. But with that being said, all of these concepts still apply to your own games, this guide is just a little bit trickier to execute than the normal ones. Alright, let's get into the gameplay. As soon as minions touch, the first thing Dopa is doing is autoing minions and throws a red card at the back line. This is because he is thinking a few steps ahead of how this lane is going to play out. He knows Talon is going to be using W on the wave and pushing it, so he's getting the head start on mission 1 by matching the wave clear before Talon even starts. If Talon doesn't W the wave and lets it push to him, then Dopa just gets free harass on him when he goes for CS and he gets mid priority, which is the opposite of what Talon wants. So in a high elo game, Dopa knows exactly what Talon's game plan is. Talon uses his first W and look how much damage it did to the wave. Now the wave is almost completely matched with each other in terms of minion health. Now that Talon W is down and the wave is even, Dopa can start working on mission 2 which is to harass. So when Talon walks up for CS, he instantly locks a gold card and pokes Talon a bit. This gold card was actually unlucky for him. He wanted a blue or red card since they do more damage than gold, but he only has a short window to harass here because of where Talon is in relation to the minions. To clarify what that means, Talon is going for a last hit here. If Dopa picks a card and waits to select a blue card, Talon will retreat back into his own minions, so when Dopa walks up and throws it, Talon's ranged minions will aggro Dopa and trade back damage. But if he throws it here, the minions won't aggro and he gets free harass. Talon throws his next W, which clears all but one of Dopa's minions, and as his last minion falls, there's only one minion left, which is exactly what he wanted for missions 1 and 2. Instead of killing this last minion, he runs back into his wave and pulls the minion in between these two pillars. So when the waves meet again, look where it is, right in the perfect freeze spot that we've talked about in a lot of other videos. If Dopa left one minion up just to do this, he's even better than I thought. It wouldn't surprise me at all as he's just an insane player, but it's impossible to know. Either way, this is exactly where you want the lane in this kind of matchup. TF can't be ganked here, and Talon is gankable. He probably did it on purpose, as he said before in one of his videos, people think they know wave control, but it's a trade secret. Dopa says even high elo players think they know wave control, but he knows it the best. So the waves are even again, and it's back to mission 1. He pulls a red card right away just like on the first wave, and is constantly auto attacking minions. While this is happening, he can see Nidalee fighting the enemy jungler for scuttle crab. So he wants to push this wave as fast as he can, or Talon will hit level 2 first and move first. So he throws another red card at the back line. Before moving on, let's talk about why this game plan is working so well and what could be happening if he didn't play it this way. So Talon would push with his W, and if TF doesn't match the wave clear, Talon would have a kind of big wave on the second wave, hit level 2, then fully shove the wave making a big wave on TF's tower, forcing him to stay in lane and kill the minions. This gives Talon a window to help his jungler fight for scuttle as this normally happens after the second wave. 
but because he's matching wave clear, he hit level 2 first. So let's see what happens instead. Talon hits level 2, and they both move down towards river. Dopa is now working on mission 3, protecting his jungler. Dopa isn't really moving to help kill Talia, because he can see Nidalee is already winning this fight. He walks right in front of Talon because he's just keeping Talon away from his jungler. So he uses pick a card and starts running towards Nidalee. He knows with full health Talon can't kill him. As soon as Talon uses his Q, he gold cards him and starts moving down. Nidalee finishes off Talia then run towards Dopa. Dopa turns right away and since he started with boots, runs down Talon and gold cards him, giving Nidalee an easy spear and an easy kill. This is why League is such a crazy game. None of this could have happened if he didn't play level 1 right. He wouldn't have the mid priority to zone Talon away from Nidalee. Now he just pushes in the wave since Talon is dead and recalls. This is super bad for Talon, he loses a ton of minions here and experience. Dopa comes back to lane and tanks the minions so they don't hit the tower. His wave catches up and look where the wave ends up settling, right in the sweet spot between the two pillars. Like I said before though, it's near impossible to actually freeze against Talon, because when the wave is big like this, you can't harass him off the wave without the wave owning you, and he can clear your wave too easily. So Dopa is going to throw a red card and a Q here as he knows he can't really freeze. He doesn't want to let this big wave crash on his tower where he's stuck CSing it. Also, he throws the Q in a way that hits most of the minions and harasses Talon at the same time, so he's doing mission 1 and 2 at the same time, which is pretty efficient. Talon is going to finish clearing the wave, and there are 4 ranged minions left, but look at their health. One tower shot will kill each one, so Dopa walks up to make sure they don't hit the tower and quickly clears them. The next wave meets, and he's just throwing blue cards and last hitting. Some of you might be wondering why he isn't throwing red cards like before. Well, now that he's level 4, he doesn't need to do a bunch of damage to the wave to prepare for Talon W, because his wave clear is good enough now to match it. He could hard push the wave, but his jungler is doing raptors, so it doesn't really do anything for him. If his jungler was invading right now, he would probably push. His jungler finishes doing raptors and is looking for a mid gank. You would think Dopa would be playing aggro trying to look for a gold card. But against a good player, they won't just let you walk up and gold card them, it would be way too obvious Nidalee is here. So he just throws a Q at the wave and is playing normally. If he plays like this, Talon might overextend for a minion and he can catch him. Sadly, Talon doesn't do that and Nidalee walks out of the brush giving herself away, so the gank won't work. Since Talon knows Nidalee is here, Dopa just clears the wave then moves out of vision to get some wards down. Notice, he wards bot side and pixel brush to make sure there's no way he can be surprised by their jungler. Also, Nidalee is on his bot side so he wants to be hugging here. He can't hug this side of the lane without vision. Now that he has proper vision, he can play a little bit more aggressive on the Talon. So when Talon walks up to last end of the tower, he pokes him a bit. The next wave comes, and the enemy jungler Talia shows in top lane killing Jace, so Dopa knows he's safe to push this wave as fast as he wants. Since he's level 5, he's going to be pushing as fast as he can to make sure he keeps lane priority for when he hits level 6, or if he needs to roam. The wave hits Talon's tower, and Dopa is looking for more harass. He's playing cautiously though, not because he's afraid of ganks, but because Talon can still easily chunk him really hard if he doesn't respect it. So instead of getting in range of Talon's W and Q to throw this blue card, he throws Q from a safe distance, then autos after Talon W is down. The next wave comes, and he's already starting to push. Like I said, he wants full lane priority versus Talon to shut down Talon's snowbally roaming. He uses Q, then a blue card. He uses a blue card instead of a red card here because this wave will give him level 6, and TF all costs 100 mana, which is a lot early game. So he wants to make sure he has enough mana to maybe use his ult after clearing the wave if he needs to. After another Q and blue card, the wave is pushed and he hits level 6. He's playing pretty far up here, getting tower damage while Talon last hits, but look how he's positioned in lane guys. He's hugging right side really hard, he knows Talia's top side has nearly took her camp's bot side, so he just plays towards his jungler so he can kite if he needs to. He also gets some pretty good harass on Talon bringing him to 50% health. Since Talon is in kill range of Nidalee and TF now, Nidalee pings she's on her way. This is something Dopa is super good at, he sets up ganks perfectly for his jungler, which is another part of mission 3. He waits for Nidalee to get close enough to spear, then he throws the card, giving them both another really easy kill, making Talon 0-3. It's safe to say this lane is over as Talon is going to be 2 levels down now, making it impossible for him to get mid priority over Dopa. Let's do a quick recap of what happened. First, Dopa knew how Talon was going to play the lane out and thinned out the wave before Talon started clearing the wave himself, and because he matched the wave clear, he had free time to harass before the next wave came. 
For the second wave, he did the same thing and hit level 2 first, then zoned Talon away from his jungler so his jungler could solo kill Talia. Then, they turned and got a free kill on Talon. When Dopa gets back to lane, he uses his lead to continuously push Talon into the tower, while also staying safe to ganks by hugging the side closer to his jungler and to his vision. And after harassing Talon to 50% health, Nidalee drives by and lands an easy spear on a stunned Talon, killing him and closing the lane out. That's going to be all for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed and see you next time.